is hungry today. Hello everyone. Today we're dining with decorum. All about buffet etiquette. How many times have I been to a function when they serve buffet? There's so much drama that goes on. As you have just seen, those gentlemen are really hungry. Let's take it from the top. When you walk into a restaurant and they're serving buffet and you go and take eight or nine pieces of bread from the bread basket fill up your stomach like that, where's the room for the rest of the food? That's a no-no when it comes to buffet etiquette. What about the young gentleman who decides that he wants to have soup and he takes the wrong soup plate? The wrong plate entirely. When you get to the soup area, there's always a soup bowl for you to take your soup. And of course, it's usually a dipped bowl. But look how he takes bread with his soup. He's dunking. This is also a no-no when it comes to buffet etiquette. Now, my, my, ladies, we know we like our comfort, but did you see those young ladies walk into the restaurant totally inappropriately dressed? One of them is coming from the spa, so she decides that she comes down to the restaurant with her robe. Even if the hotel allows you or the restaurant allows you, you know it's a no-no, it's totally inappropriate. What about the lady wearing her lovely skimpy little shorts? That's an absolute no-no. There are some restaurants that will absolutely tell you no, you can't come in. And you should understand why. to our young gentleman. Hmm, this looks sumptuous, but can you imagine they're here for a business meeting. When you eat all of that, you're only going to go back to your office and do what? You get it, you're going to sleep. But this is what we see all the time. People go to restaurants, people go to functions, and they pile their plate up. You know you're not going to eat all that food, so why pile it up? But you must remember one thing. Buffet means you can go there back time and time again. It's eat as much as you like, but eat it sequentially. Talking about starters, main meal and dessert. The young gentleman has mixed it all up. He has his starter, which is the salad, as well as his finisher, the dessert, all in one plate. That's a no-no. Your main meal always is starter, salad or soup main course and then the dessert comes after let me leave you with some quick tips when it comes to buffet etiquette as soon as you come in and you sit down in case you didn't notice none of the gentlemen picked up their napkin you must always put your napkin on your lap way before you start eating and when you then decide to get up to eat a couple of bread rolls on your plate is just as good enough for that meal it's lunchtime don't forget. Always go for your starter, which could be the salad or the soup. Choose any one of them. If you decide to take both, that's still okay. 
but eat in moderation. Don't forget, you are going back to the office. And then when you go for your main meal, rice, egusi, pounded yam, and salad. That is a complete mixture. That's a no-no, once again. How much can you eat with this tiny stomach? If you are going for rice, take the rice first. Of course you can go back for pounded yam, but don't mix the two together. I'm sure you know what I mean. And of course, your dessert is always last. And that is just your cake or your ice cream. None other than those two. That's all I've got time for today. I hope you picked a few tips when it comes to buffet etiquette. Always use etiquette to your advantage. Remember, think etiquette, think Janet. Airtel, the smartphone network. And that's our show today. But just before we let you go, this tweet just came in. Emmanuel Den, he says, you cannot drop the cutoff mark and expect the cutoff for pass mark in the university to be 50. I think there's a fraud somewhere. Abu Bakar Rufai says, admitting students with 120 marks is like admitting students with nine Fs. <laughs> <laughs> the registrar should be, should be questioned. Um... First, does Akimboye. Akimboye says, we mustn't forget that a person can enter university with 120 cutoff mark and graduate with first class. Mm. Well, yeah, you got a point, you got a point. And then uh, Robert Scrivener says, um, government must invest in research and scientific innovation that will enhance our public health management. Oh, he took us back to public health. And then Akimboye again says that, most Western countries don't have cut-off marks to give everyone access to, to higher education. <laughs> okay, the, the, this one, um, this is an appeal from Gabriel Jacob Adol. He says, may I use this opportunity to appeal to Lagos State Government to take immediate action to sanitize these areas, from burger cement to coconut down to second gate tin can are uh, littered with human feces. The drainage systems are also covered with pure water sachets. Waste oils have also taken over the entire environmental. In, I invite, she's inviting us to carry out an, a document in the area to draw attention to both. Tanker drivers and motor boys have converted the area to their public toilet. It says this is disgraceful. That's Gabriel Jacob Ado. And that is Sunrise. So today I want to thank you for letting us be a part of your morning. Those are sent in their comments. We do appreciate them, even though we could not read all of them. Thank you so much. We say have yourself a very beautiful rest of the day and go out there and be a perfect and wonderful citizen of Nigeria and a wonderful human being. Love your neighbor as yourself and be the best that you can be. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you next week.